Hey guys, I'm Phaedra, and welcome to All Things Phaedra, where I cover cars, travel, and just really cool stuff. But uh, I know what you're looking at right now. I know what you're looking at. You're looking at that. You're looking at my Genesis 400 series grill. It's a four burner grill. And if you've been here before, you know that I classify myself as a girl who likes to grill. And if you are here, maybe you like to grill as well, whether you're male, female, or something in between. But I'm here to tell you that there's more that you can do with your Weber grill. So I was reading this article recently that said that griddling is having a moment. And then I saw that the article was dated 2020 when I guess we were into trying new things. Well, griddling is still around and it's rising in popularity. And I'm here to tell you and show you that you can do that with your Weber grill. So I actually met the team from Weber at the Chicago Auto Show of all places because that's where they are based. And they said, hey, you know what? We'd like to send you a griddle to try out with your grill. And I said, sure thing. So here it is. It's so big, it can't even fit in the shot. But this is the griddle insert, full-size griddle insert for the four burner Genesis grill. And if you think that it is in this box right now, you are mistaken because it weighs, I think I estimate about 45 pounds. And the great thing about it is, well, why don't I show you? On second thought, it might be more than 45 pounds. And what I like about this, if you can see, is that it is pre-seasoned, so it's ready to take out of the box, put on your grill, and go. But they do recommend that you do a little bit of prep work on this, and I'm going to show you what I do before we actually stick it on the grill. I hope you have a big sink, because this is the easiest place to wash it. I'm going to use a soft cloth, warm, soapy water, and they do make it a point to tell you that this is the only time that you will use soap and water. Calm down. We're only doing this the very first time. I know there's a lot of controversy out there about soap, no soap. We're pretty much team no soap. But this, we're going to wash it first with warm, soapy water. And then we're going to let it completely dry. Which is easy to do on a warm, sunny day like today. And then we are going to season it with just a little bit of oil. I'm just going to give it a quick cursory dry with some paper towels. And now I'm going to take it outside to completely finish drying, and then we're going to apply the first coat of oil to help season it. Now that we are washed and completely dry, the next step is to season this. And what we want to use is a really neutral oil, like a vegetable oil or canola oil. And then you want to take a soft cotton cloth or a paper towel. I'm going to use paper towel that is pretty lint-free. And you're just going to rub it on the pan, front, back, inside, outside, sides, everywhere. And then once that's done, you want to make sure you wipe off any excess oil. And we're going to put it on the grill to actually season it. And again, I'm just gonna wipe off any excess oil. Okay, you ready for the next step? Now we're ready to actually season it. And we do that by applying it, by applying heat to the, the actual griddle for about 30 minutes. And if, by the way, if you have cast iron cookware, you do the same thing, except you usually do it at a lower temperature and you do it in your oven. So we're gonna open my nicely cleaned grill and we are actually going to remove the grates. And then you want to leave on here these, these covers right here. In my last video, I called them flavor blasters. They're actually flavorizers. But we, I mean, my name's pretty cool, flavor blasters, but we're going to leave them as is. And the griddle is actually going to catch on this lip right here on the top. I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to fold that flat so it doesn't get in the way. If it is in the way, I can just remove it completely. Yeah. Now let's come in close and take a look at the fit here. As you can see, it's 
set up on the lip of both the front and the back. And you want to set it up this way with the holes towards the front of the grill and this wider opening towards the back. And you'll notice that you've got an even larger opening in the back right corner. And that's where if you've got um, different debris and so on on the griddle and you're going to kind of scrape it off, you're going to push it right down into that hole. So now comes the grill master expertise. Thank you very much. This is when we want to preheat the grill up to between 450 and 500 degrees. And then we want to hold it there for about 30 minutes. And then what we should see is this is going to get darker and it's going to be seasoned and it's going to be ready for griddling. Well, it's been about 30 minutes and we're going to we're going to call it done. As you can see, I was able to get the temperature to hold steady at about 450 and you can see how low I had to hold the temperature. And I'm not kidding when I tell you this griddle holds some serious heat. What we're going to do to finish off the seasonings. We're going to turn everything off. You ready? Woo boy. Now, as you can tell, the surface has gotten much, much darker. And so what we're going to do to just finish that up is we're going to grab a wad of paper towels. We're not going to cook them, but we're going to grab some big tongs and we're just going to gently wipe and get up any uneven spots or excess oil or little bugs that maybe got in here by accident. And hopefully you can see the difference from before and after seasoning. Now remember that this is an optional step. You can cook as soon as it comes out of the box, but this is just what they recommend. They actually recommend that you do this a few times. I'm going to do it once and then we're going to start cooking. Well, it's almost high noon, which any good videographer will tell you is the absolute worst time to shoot a video, but it's also lunchtime. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I know we normally think of bacon and eggs as a breakfast food, but I say you can have breakfast anytime. And when you're using your griddle, they actually recommend that you, the first few times that you do fattier foods, so like burgers or bacon. And it just so happens that my husband wants to cook some bacon. And I said, I'll do it. Let me do it. So we're going to griddle. And the way that we're going to do that, remember I just seasoned this. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to preheat this for about 15 minutes. And for bacon, I read that you want it to be, there we go. You want it to be at a medium heat. So, you know, like three, 375. All right. Oh, we're good and hot. And as you can see, I got my meats here. So I've got two packages and I actually read that your bacon, if you want to take it out and let it kind of come to room temperature for about 15 minutes, that helps prevent it from curling as much on the, on the griddle. And then what is this? This is turkey bacon. So this is the boy bacon. This is the girl bacon. That's what I like to eat. And this is a little crazy, but I'm going to try cooking the turkey bacon in the bacon grease. And you may, may be like, well, doesn't that defeat the purpose? Well, no, because I'm just cooking in the flavor. I'm not going to actually eat the fat. So anyway, let's go. Oh, yeah. And if your bacon is starting to curl too much or you want to make sure that it's even, you can just set this right on top while it's cooking. And that'll make sure it cooks evenly. As you can see, there's a pretty good amount that you can fit on here. And if I wasn't doing turkey bacon, I'd have plenty of room for eggs or pancakes and do it all at once. I'd say I kind of nailed it when it came to the fattiness. They recommend that fat to really season it. Yeah, I think I did the job here. All right, I'm not a big bacon eater, but I try not to burn it to a crisp. I think that's in pretty good shape, so I'm gonna take that off and let it drain. And while that's happening, just for funsies, I'm gonna cook two eggs. Weber sent me these little egg rings, silicone egg rings that I can put on there. And I'm gonna fry up some eggs to go with this bacon. All right, right here in the bacon grease, we're gonna take these silicone rings, I 
Now, once the eggs are set, I'm gonna take these rings off to make it easier to flip them. It looks pretty. Two eggs over easy, coming up. I think we're about ready to flip these eggs. Got my nice big spatula. That was actually super easy to do. No edges of the pan to get in the way. Well, the bacon's ready, the eggs are almost ready, and then I'm gonna go eat, and I'll come back out and I'll show you how we're gonna clean this up and get ready for tonight's dinner. I'm not even kidding when I tell you that this is one of the best eggs I've ever had. It's so easy and it's so uniform. And this bacon, like, okay, turkey bacon with bacon <laughs> grease. I approve. Now that we're all done, there are only two things you need for cleanup, this and this. And this is why they recommend that your drip pan underneath has been emptied and cleaned because you are going to produce a lot of grease. And all we're going to do is move it all to this little drip hole at the end of the griddle. We're going to scrape off any of this debris. Don't be afraid to be rough. Put it all down the hole. And once you feel like you've gotten most of the oil or grease off, you're just going to take some paper towels and just wipe the whole thing down. I'm going to let it sit and cool, and now it'll be nice and seasoned for tonight's dinner. The one thing that I always feel a challenge with when it comes to grilling, so I'm going to try griddling, and that is fish. And just like that, the light has changed and it's dinner time. So we see our griddle is ready to go and I'm just gonna do what I did earlier, which is get it preheated to about medium heat and wait till you see what I'm cooking for dinner. I've got two salmon fillets that have been seasoned with just some smoked paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, a little cumin and salt. And then I really wanted to grill some veggies. So I just took whatever I had in the house, and that happened to be some carrots, some cabbage, some onions, and some sliced garlic, added a little olive oil and some seasoning. And then to help me out, I've got my accessories nice and clean again, a little extra oil in case I need it, and then some water in case I want to help steam the veggies a little bit, kind of like they do at a Japanese steakhouse. I'm right around 400 degrees. I'm feeling pretty good about this heat, so I'm going to lower this. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the veggies on because I think they're going to take a little bit longer. So let's go. That is a satisfying sound. I added some water just to get them to steam a little bit, make sure they're good and soft. And they look like they're getting pretty good here. In fact, I think I might be ready to throw the fish on. Now, I have already pre-oiled the fish, so I'm hoping they don't stick, but we're gonna do the filet side down. And here's the thing, I like fish at home. I like fish on the grill especially, but if you've ever tried to cook it, you know that you get bits and pieces in between the grill and you almost always have to put something on the grill so that it doesn't fall through. Well. This is gonna hopefully give us a nice sear and good temperature, good texture. The trick to getting the fish not to stick is to make sure the temperature is high enough and that you let it sit and cook long enough so it naturally pulls away from the cooking surface. It's looking pretty good. I think we might be ready to eat. So dinner's ready. I've got the salmon plated, but before I go sit down, let me turn everything off. And then again, cleanup is just a quick scrape. And then we're just going to push it all the way down to the end. And if there's any excess oil, you just take some paper towel and wipe it down and you're good to go. Here's the final meal. And I'm ready to dig in. So what I love about the griddle insert is that it is ready to go right out of the box. Now, I showed you following the directions that they recommend just to give you better cooking surface, but it's really up to you. That's a huge advantage because cast iron can be a little tough to get it seasoned right out of the gate. I love the accessories that it has to go with it, and I love the even cooking surface. So this is an option now that I have to use for my grill. One appliance, two purposes, 
And I hope I gave you some ideas on what you could do with your Weber Genesis grill. Any questions, leave me a comment. And if you're looking for where to purchase it, you can certainly check out my links down below. But in the meantime, what I'd really love for you to do is hit the subscribe button and come back for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.